Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to present a mini project for data structure and algorithm. Our group new project title is Hotel Booking System, and our lecturer is Mr. Wan Muhammad Shahe bin Wan Hussein. In our team, we're having six team members, which is Liu Chun Kit is as our team leader. Ong Wei Cheng, Ong Wei Chi, Tua Yong Liang, Liang Wei Chi is me, myself, as well as Kong Chun. My name is Leong Wei Chi with the matrix number CA19104. Today, I'm going to present the introduction for our mini project. So in our introduction, we have three main components, which is menu, enter, and display output. However, I will explain the purpose of creating this hotel booking system first before going to each component. The purpose of creating this hotel booking system is to allow us to find and identify relevant information in more efficient way where when we're going to delete one booking data, we no need to find it one by one to identify which one to delete. In hotel booking system, we can choose the delete option in the main menu and key in the booking ID. Then the system will remove the relevant booking data, same goes to when we perform inserting a new booking a new booking, editing, or even displaying all the booking that we have. So in our first component, which is main menu, we have few options for the user to choose, which are uh, booking a room, view customer record, search customer record, delete customer record, edit customer record, display customer record based on category as well as exit. So in our second component, which is enter, the user of hotel booking system need to enter or key in some basic information like booking ID, name, phone number, and email address. Then the system will prompt the user which type of room they desire, number of people who stay inside the room, and spell as the duration of staying inside the hotel. So after the user have entered this information, a uh, user able to delete or edit their booking by choosing the relevant option in the uh, main, main menu where they're able to key in their booking ID, then the system will operate itself to delete or edit the data. So in our third component, which is displaying output, the hotel booking system will display level, relevant data when user choose this few option, which is display customer record based on category, real customer record, and search customer record. When the user choose search customer record option, the system will require users to key in the booking ID to search and display the data. In view customer record option, the system will display all the details of customer who already booked the hotel. In, uh, in display customer record based on category, the system will require the user to choose which category to view and display their output respectively. So uh, next, uh, next is the sample data. Okay, uh, these are the four sample data that we are going to use uh, during an, our entire mini project. At first, our system needs to define the size, the maximum size of the data is equal to 50. First, we need to declare the Shark function. Shark function, why we need to declare the shark function? Shark function is used to easy to store the data and put them based on the category. So we have category price, category hotel detail, category person detail, category hotel, category spec, and the global variable. PTR, new PTR, last PTR, current PTR, and the previous PTR. For the structure price, we have the price room. And we declare it as the group. Price room is the price of the room at the hotel. The total price, we also declare it as group. This is because the total price is the number of days multiple of the price room. For the hotel detail function, we have integer headroom, 
10 room is based on big room, medium room, or small room. For the shop price hotel, for the shop price, we need to set the hotel speed. Integer, number of people. Integer, day of stay. Next, the shop person detail. This is the customer detail. Charm, number, and we set the array equal to 20. Charm, phone number, array is 15. Charm, email, 25. For the hotel structure, we have integer booking ID, structure hotel detail for the hotel info, structure person detail, person info, structure hotel, point to next. And the structure stack, we have integer top, integer stack for the size that we need to key in the integer count. Lastly is the global variable structure for them. We have add PTR, new PTR, last PTR, current PTR, and previous PTR. Hi, my name is Liu Junki, my fact number CA191115. I will going to present the integer man function. The system will prompt the message and ask the user to enter the option. This menu will display many times after the system finishes the option. The program will not end unless the user enter X, which means exit the program. User can only enter the above option, other than that are not allowed. From the code, we can see there are while loop and a variable X initialized to 1. When x equals to 1, while loop will not end. A switch case will based on the user enter go to different function. When case equals to x, x equals to 0. The while loop will end, the program also end. The get type room function is I have three types. The first one is big and the second one is normal and the third one is small. Uh, all the three, all the type is based on the integer. So if the user choose not, no, if the user choose four, so he will print out the please only enter above. So if the user choose correct one, so he will proceed to another function. In function or get, get price room, we set up all the type have their own price. So if the user choose type one, the price is 50 ringgit. So if the user choose type two, the price is 100. And the user choose, choose type three, they will get 150. Next is get total price function. Inside, when I want to choose the type of in, change the type of hotel, it will ask, please enter new type of room, and it will direct to get type room, where it will show big, normal, small, and type of room. And after we enter the type, it will return type to here. And current pointer will point to the shop variable hotel info and save the type we get just now into the member of it, which is type room. And after we get the type room, it will direct to get price room. And the get price room we will pass the type into here so that it can identify which type we have entered just now and return the price. And the price will 
save in the truck variable hotel info, hotel fee, and the member is price room. And after we get the price per room and the type room, we will also the total price will also get have the effect. So we will go to the get total price function. The total price function will have passed three variables where is the which is a price room, number of people, and day stay. We will use three of this data to calculate the total where we the price room will time the number of people and times the day stay, and we will get the total. It lasts when the total will return. We will return the total to here. We will save the total into the total price and this is under the hotel truck variable hotel fee hotel info is a nested nested structure so maybe i will enter the type of room maybe two and the price just like I, what i say just now it will direct the to the get type room and get price room and get total price so the price room before this is 50 now become 100 and the total fee from 500 become 1000 next is operation five number of people when we enter the change it will save into the current pointer and point to the truck variable hotel info and inside the variable hotel info it will save inside the member which is number of people after we have changed the number of people the get total price will need to update again so we will put the put here to recalculate the total price so for example, the new number of people is 3. So just now the number of people is 2, now become 3. And the price from 1,000 become 1,500. Next is day to stay. Same with the case before this. It will save the change inside the current point, the point to the hotel info and inside the hotel info have a day stay member member of stay stay so we will save the data we store inside here and again the get total price will that is will be influenced so we will pass this three variable and last we will store in the total price and then we'll break and show again the new data so from the new day of stay will maybe become three. So the price have from 1,500 become 900. And it has a default where when I enter the, when I enter the number that is not inside this, maybe nine, it will show invalid enter. F flash SPDIN is used to clear the buffer so that we can ensure that there, is, there will be no effect to the data after it. And the flag is equal to zero so there will no output show. And last is edit, as, as it edit operation seven. When I enter the operation seven, the edit will become zero so we'll stop from looping and the flag will become zero also it will not show the display the data so it will back to the main menu so i think that's all from my part thank you i will going to present the insert not function User are allowed to insert the data into a system. In this function, user will enter all the data required. 
after enter the data, user can add new data. All the data that insert will show in the list that continuously. From the code, we can see this is the insert at the end by using linker as method. The new PDR will allocate a new address in the memory. All the data will store under the address hold by the new PDR. Most of the variable value are entered by user. Some of the variable will call function to get the value. When done to insert data, the program will check now for head PDR. If this is an empty set, head PDR will point to the address hold by new PDR. If the list are not empty, last PDR, PDR next will point to the new PDR. Last PDR will point to the new PDR. New PDR, PDRS will equal to now. In display data function, if the user didn't key in before, so they will, the system will print out the list is empty and cannot display. If the user have key in anything before, uh, so we will display the data. Uh, so if have three user key in, so they will print out three user information because we use the do loop to print the data. Okay, in in print current function, uh, this function is just print out the user key in before uh, the first one will print out the booking id uh, and the customer name customer phone number customer email uh, and room type room price room and number of people day of stay and the total fee good morning sir my name is Brian. My matching number is CA191103. Now I will present the function search data function. For the search data function, we need to initially declare the count equal to zero. This is because count is used to check the search result to exit the searching loop. Next, we need to initially declare exit equal to zero. Exit is used to checking the searching condition looping. Other than that, we need to declare integer choice and element. Choice and element is the option menu and the data to be searched. Now we go into the flow. Firstly, we need to set the condition if the part PTR goes to now. When FPTR equals to now, that means the list is empty. So we will bring out the function, we will bring out the list is empty. If the FPTR is not equal to now, we will continue the function in line 412. While well, exit not equal to 1, we can see that. We initially declare the exit equal to zero. When exit is not equal to one, that means the exit now is equal to one. So we will go into the looping. First, we will present, we will print out the menu function. Please choose for first category. First category is room type. Second, Second category is number of people. Third category is state of state. Then we will call customer to key in the choice one, two, or three. Later, we will set the condition current PTR equals to FPTR. Next, we are going to Identify the user choice and going into the switch case. 
case one is the room type. Case two is number of people. Case three is day of stay. And the default function is printf. Printf, we will let user know there is an invalid entry, so they need to select the only integer from the above. For the case one, we will for customers. We will call user to enter the room type. So the user need to key in the number. Later on, the system will point out the motif that the user is searching for the room type for number, example number one. Later on, we will go in into the looping again. This looping is used to searching the data that user need to search. While current PTR is not equal to now, that means the current PTR, we will start not from the end. We will start searching from the front. Since we Declare that current PTR is equal to PTR at length 423. Since current PTR is not equal to now, therefore we will go into the loop. If current PTR go to hotel info type group is equal to the element, element here is the user key in, um, user key in value. When the value is matching, then the count is equal to 1. When count equal to 1, that means there is the data inside the list. Therefore, we will continue declare exit equal to 1. Later, we will print out the data that user searching. After exit the if condition, we will put the time, we will put the another condition that current PTR is equal to current PTR to on the next. This means when we use the current PTR to search the data from PTR. We need to check one by one in the list. So we need to set the current PTR to next pointer, that is pointer next. After going to this condition, we will continue the loop. This is because we we said that exit equal to one before here because we need to search in the data throughout the list that we put in. For case two, this is a number of people. Same as case one, we will prompt the user to key in the element that user need to search. While current PTR is not equal to now, then we are going into the loop and searching for the data for hotel info for the number of people. While the element that user key in is matched in the structure number of people, then the count will equal to one, the exit will equal to one, and we will print out the data that user structure. After we search the data, the current PTR will point to the next PTR, that is pointer next, PTR next. So we will continue the looping until there's until the data until we search throughout the list 
and then there is no data and will exit the loop. For case three, there's the day of state. In case two before, we will also prompt the user to key in the element. While the current PTR is not equal to now, we will continue to the loop. If current PTR to hotel info of the base state equal to the user key in element, then the count equal to one, exit also equal to one, then we print the current data that user searches. After one plan, we will continue to current PTR point to current current PTR point to for the next. This is because we need to search all the list that inside the system. That's a condition when user fail to enter the number one, two, or three that's stated, then it will go in the default function. This will import in value entry, then we will prompt user to select again. Then we will step here, exit equal to zero. Why exit equal to zero? This is because the looping condition here is while exit equals to not equals to one, we will continue the looping. Uh, as we can see here, the exit is equal to zero, so we will continue the looping until until what? Until the function here exit equal to one, so we will exit the tooting loop and we will come to here come to the line for a five. If now is equal to zero, now equal to zero, that means we need to check the search data that is it exit. Okay, since case one, we search here. We we state that how is equal to one. Case two here, we also state that how is equal to one. And case three, we also state that how is equal to one when there is a data that searches. So if no data searches. We will state that the count is equal to zero. So the system will come that sorry, no such data count. Then we will exit the loop. Else, if there is a data found, then the, the system will from that all the search data is listed. Mm -hmm. I will show the example output of the system. For the search data function, we need to enter. C is search customer record. So we key in C and we enter. The system will come out that we need to choose for the search category. For example, I choose one room type and I enter one. Please enter the room type. For example, I key, I enter one, the one to search the room type of one. Then it will come out the type that booking ID 103 is booking the room type one. Then you bring out the, all the user data and you bring out that all such data is listed. Now we continue to search for the categories to number of people. For example, I enter the number of people. Let's say is two. 
we can see that also that this is the data that user have we can see number of people is equal to two what if the number of people is equal to 10 now we see number of people is equal to 10 sorry no search found this means that in the list in the system list there's no number of people is equal to 10 so there's no search data found now we continue to search for the category day of day for example the day of day there is um, also this customer again we can see that the time day of stay is equal to five and you will see that all the search data is listed now i will show you the another for example the room type Room type, uh, room type number two. Okay, we can see that we got two user data here. Booking ID 101, that the room type is two. Booking ID 102, the room type number is two. And all the search data is the now we can't go into another number of people. Number of people for okay, we can see that the booking ID 104. The number of people here is equal to 4. Then all the search data is listed that's all for the search data function good morning sir my name is ong wei cheng matrix id ca190998 now i will present the delete not function in our project in the delete not function first the booking id was the Display as integer, then if the head PTR equal to null, it will print the list is empty, cannot be deleted. Example, example here when the when I choose D, then it will show the list is empty because I haven't insert the data of the customer else if the PTR head PTR not equal to null it will ask for the booking ID of the data which need to delete and the current PTR will equal to head PTR okay while the current PTR PTR next is not equal to null then if the current PTR booking ID is equal to the booking ID you entered, then it will break the wall. Else, the previous PTR equal to current PTR, and the current PTR equal to current PTR, PTR next. We will point to the next node and end wall. If if the current PTR booking ID equals to the booking ID entered, and if the current PTR equal to the head PTR, head PTR will equal to current PTR, uh, PTR next. Head point to the null. If the head equal to null, then it will become the empty list, and also the last PTR will equal to null. Else if the current PTR equal to the last PTR, then the previous 
PTR will point to the PTR next will equal to now. Last PTR equal to previous PTR. Else, if the previous PTR, PTR next is equal to current PTR, PTR next. Then it will free the current PTR and destroy the not free the memory and it will print the delete is successful else it will print sorry not match found example I will show in the code and I, I insert the data the four sample data inside this Then, if I want to delete, I want to delete, okay, enter booking ID to delete, and I choose simple uh, 102, and the delete is successful, so when we view the, so we can view, and view the, the data, okay, so, the booking ID, the first first in the list is booking ID 0 0.01. Then the second will become the 103 and continue with 104 booking ID. So the 102 is already deleted. So if I again I do do for the 103, I delete. Delete 103 and delete successful okay and i show again okay okay so the booking id the first in the list is 101 and the second is 104 okay if i want to delete a booking id which is not List in the not insert in 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 this program. So one 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 one. Okay. The sorry. Uh, the actor book ID is to delete is one one one. Sorry, not match found. So we cannot delete the booking ID because we do not found the number one 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 in our brain. That's all. Thank you. Good day to short Sharil. I'm Ong Hui Ji. Matrix ID is DA19099. I will explain for the edit data function. Inside the edit data function, we have four integer variable. The first is ID edit. It used to store the booking ID for the of the user have key in. And next is choose. Choose is used to store the number we have entered and use in the switch case. Next is edit. When edit is used in the while condition, when it where when edit is equal to one, it will keep looping for this edit. If edit is equal to zero, it will exit from the looping. And next is flag. Flag when it when flag is equal to one, it will display the it will display the print current function. If flag equal to zero, nothing to display. It will, it will not display, display anything. So first, the system will check whether head pointer is equal to now. If it is equal to now, it will print that the list is empty, cannot edit, and return to the main menu. If head pointer is not equal to now, it will direct to here. Where when I enter E, edit customer record, it will enter here and ask to enter the booking ID to be edited. And when I enter the booking ID to be edited, it will store in the ID edit. And then the system will make the current pointer equal to head pointer. 
But for example, head pointer is now equal to, is point to the node that says the booking ID 101. And current pointer will equal to that 101, point to the booking ID 101. While current pointer not equal to now, it will check if the, con if the current pointer, the booking ID same with the ID edit or not. If not, it will it will point to the pointer next. Uh, for example, if the current pointer now is point to the booking ID one zero one, and if I add, I enter the ID edit is one zero three, it is not same. It will direct to here, and it will point to the pointer next. Where after the booking uh, booking ID one zero one, it will direct to booking ID 102, not same again, and it will point to the next pointer, which is 103. And when it is same with the ID edit, so it will break from this and come to here. If until the end of the list, there is still didn't have any booking ID is same with the ID edit. And where it will come to the last and the last will point to the now, so current pointer equal to now, it will print F. Sorry, no match found. And return to main menu. Else it will print current, where it will print the current pointer, like the data, the data store in the current pointer. So for example, I will enter the booking ID 103 and it will check like just now, it will check for the condition, and when one the, when the current pointer is equal to one zero three, same with the ID edit, it will break and print the data of this booking ID. And next, it will direct into while condition while edit equal to one. So, if I choose the operation is edit customer name, I add the one. It will store inside the choose and it will switch to one, case one, where it will ask the customer to enter the new name. When I enter the new, when the user enter the new name, it will save inside the current pointer and point to the shrug variable present in four and inside the present info has a member of name. It will store inside this. Uh, for example, the new name maybe will be the short. I change to the short form. PYL. And after I enter the, the change, it will break and come to here and show the new information. Where like this, I enter the change and it will show the new information. The name has already changed. And second, maybe I will do the operation of change the customer email. Again, it will show the instruction and when I enter the new change, it will save to save in the current pointer, point to the Shrug variable person info inside the shrug variable in it will store inside the member of email. So I will change to tylyahoo.com where the original is tryongrang at gmail.com and it will change. Next is customer phone number case three. Same with the part, last two fung, last two change, it will point, it will store in the current pointer and point to the shrug variable present info, and the member is phone, phone number. So maybe the new phone number is like this, different from last one. The data has been changed and show again the data. I will going to present the display cat data function. This function will display the data based on the user select 
category. Users are allowed to choose the number of category and choose the category of data to display. The data will push into the stack based on the category. This function will call the sort function. After the stack data is sorted, the stack will pop and display the data based on the category that have been choose. From the code, from the code, we can see the starting of this data will check the empty list. If the list is empty, the function will end. The number to display the category will ask. After the after that, the category data will record. Data will push into the stack based on the category. Time for push record of short function. The data will display using stack method, which is the data will pop at the top. Now I will talk about the initial stack function in our project. In this initial stack function, it will pass the struct stack data inside this function. The data top will the old data top will be become negative one and also the data count will be equal to zero. It is because it allows the push and pop function well so that they need to assign as negative one and also zero. Next, I'm going to present the sort function that we use in our mini project. So in our first function, uh, in our sort function, we're using the bubble up sort. Okay, first we declare our uh, three variable, which is inte uh, integer i, integer index, integer count, where this integer count equals to data num count. Data num count is our stopping point, which is the, our total data that we're having. Uh, let's say in our here mini project, we're having four set of sample data. That means that like for each category, we're having four set of data. So automatically, integer count will be equals to four. Then we're using two for loop, which the first for loop, we initiate uh, the i equals to zero, where with i starting from zero, and i less than the stopping point count, and i plus plus. Then for the second for loop, we initiate the index equals to zero where it start from uh, index equal uh, starting from zero. Then index is less than the count minus i minus one. Uh, why we need to minus i and minus one here is where uh, when we do the sorting, okay, uh, we need to minus two where uh, one, one is come from the I and then another one is with that uh, minus directly where this is to prevent that uh, when we having like let's say we having four data set and then first data can compare with second data second data can compare with third data third data can compare with fourth data however fourth data unable to compare with the fifth data because we don't have the fifth data so to prevent this we have to minus two so uh, the minus two, one is from itself minus one, one, another one is from i, the value of i. Okay, then we set the index i plus plus. Okay, then we come to a condition where uh, the data num stack index is less than data num stack index plus one. So when here we see that if our value one, so our data one, uh, data 1 is less than our data 2, then it will go to the swap function. So from here, the system here, okay, how are we going to know, uh, how are we going to display our sort function part, okay, in our bubble up sort. So we first we choose F because we wanted to display all uh, based on category. So here we having three category maximum to display. So I will display three. So for the category one, I will choose room type. 
Category two, I will choose number of people. Category three, I will choose day state. So in here we can see the room type, okay, because we having four sample data. So at in each category, we also having four set of data also. Lah, okay, so all this uh in all these three category, all the data are uh, arranged in ascending order, which is bubble up lah, from uh, value small to value big. So from the root type, we clearly can see that uh, they're having uh, they're having a room type which is small, which is normal, and which is big. And number of people we can see on uh, here we have two people, three people, four people, and five people. And day of stay, the duration is one day only, three day only, uh, another three day only, and with uh, five day only. So uh, I will expand the swap part in the swap function. So after they going uh, to the swap function, okay, uh, they will need to check the condition again. Okay, if the condition fulfilled in index less than count minus i minus one, then it will stop beeping. Okay, then they will check for the next condition, next for loop when you, uh, next for loop condition, which is i less than count. Is it uh, they fulfill already? If fulfill already, this loop also will stop as well. So these two for loop, after they're going to the swap, they need to recheck the condition, then the looping will be stopped. So next I will pre present the swap function that we use in our mini project. So inside the swap function, here is where we perform like the exchanging of uh, the position of the value one and value two. The first value and the second value. So in our swap function, first we have to declare a variable to store the data temporarily, which is the variable temp in integer. So we assign our variable temp is equals to our data num stack index one. So this is our value one. Okay. Then here is come to the exchanging part where data num stack index one equals to data num stack index two. Then we keep the data nums that index to the value second value, also keep inside the temporary uh, variable. So that's why from here, okay, from here we able to see that uh, all the variable are stored and doesn't disappear as far well as they're arranging in ascending order. Because we're using the bubble up sort, so they will see that when the uh, first value is smaller than the second value, then they will keep it at the first. Then if the value is bigger, then they will exchange, 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 exchange until they done everything. So here is the output where we can see all the data are in ascending order. Next, I'm going to present the push function that used in our mini project. So inside our push function, first we assign top equals to data num top. Then we assign current PTR equals to head PTR. Then the, our, we put a looping here where our looping condition when the uh, current PTR is not equals to now. So here is the first condition that we need to check. Then we have to check is the if uh, we increase the top num uh, number of top, is it will equals to the size number, um, the number of size. So if top plus one equals to size, then we have to say that the stack is overflow already. We cannot add anymore. Then we return the top value back. Okay. Else if the data still can uh, insert, that means that the top value will increase as well as the data num count will increase one also, increase by one. Okay. Then if the cat type, Cat type that we put is equals to value one, which is our room type is equal to one, category type equal to one. Then uh, the data num stack top will equals to current PTR. Then the aside they will store at the hotel in four type room. Okay. Else if if category equals to two, which is number of people, then the data num stack top will equal to current PTR also. Then they will store at the hotel in four non-people. Else, 
if the category type is equals to three, then the data num stack top will equals to current PTR, which will store at the hotel in four day state. Then after this uh, looping, uh, sorry, after this if else, we have to say that the current PTR is equals to current PTR. Uh, sorry, current PTR, this variable is equals to current PTR to the next PTR next. That means that uh, it will refresh, uh, put up the second value and then see, uh, put out the second cat type value and then see determine whether is it is it, uh, it will repeat the process again. Uh, okay, after they done this looping, they will return the value, top value. Now, I will talk about the pop function in our project. In the pop function, the top value will pass into this function. If the top value is less than zero, it will print stack under flow cannot pop and it will return the original top value if top is bigger than equal that bigger and equal than zero it will return top minus one value in conclusion our project hotel booking system has implemented several method like structure stack searching and sorting Besides, we also go and find the solution at online. For example, researching the similar project like hotel booking system and we go and take some idea from it and implement into our pro project. That's all from our group. Thank you.